All right, thank you for staying with Daybreak. We're about to start this conversation on the nominations headache. It's supposed to begin from the first all the way to the end of April, but there's a lot of going on. Let me introduce my guests in studio first, then set the stage for you and uh, so that you understand what this is all about. Honorable Beatrice Elachi is here, former public service and gender CAS. Now she's running for Dagoretti North Member of Parliament. Thank you for making time. David Olesankok, nominated Member of Parliament, is with us in studio. Asante Sana for making time. Honorable Jared Okelo Nyando, Member of Parliament, is here with us. Asante Sana for making time. We're still waiting for Metika Linturi, Senator for Meru, to join in online. As soon as he does, we'll drop him in into the conversation. We'd also like to hear from you at Trevor Mbij at Citizen TV Kenya. Use the hashtag Daybreak. If you're wondering what I'm talking about, more than 900 aspirants eyeing various elective seats have applied to contest as independent candidates with a number expected to rise amid fears over party nominations. Registrar of political parties under it to say 650 applicants have been cleared and their symbols approved with those keen on vying as independent candidates having until 2nd of May to make their submissions. Well, the registrar has at the same time ruled out reopening of party membership registers after last Saturday's registration deadline. Francis Gashuri reports on the countdown to nominations. Political parties have until 22nd of April to identify their flag bearers ahead of the August 9th general election. Fears of botched nominations forcing some aspirants to opt out of the primaries and go to the ballot as independent candidates. We want to note that by the close of business of yesterday, which is 28th of March 2022, 912 persons had manually applied to the Office of Register of Political Parties for clearance that they are not members of political parties, out of which 650 applications have already been processed and clearance letters issued. Chaotic nominations in the last three general elections, particularly in major political parties, where clinching the party ticket is as good as handing one the gubernatorial, parliamentary or civic seat causing jitters among aspirants. The number of independent candidates expected to grow, with 2nd of May being the deadline for submission of preferred symbols. OLPP is at an advanced stage of developing independent management system supplement to supplement the manual process this system shall enable aspirants to submit their request for clearance uh, letters and symbols upon payment of a service charge uh, such uh, a service charge 500 shillings payable through mpesa pay bill political party primaries kick off as early as end of this week and must be concluded by 22nd of April. So far, 17,375 aspirants have submitted their applications in 68 political parties, the number likely to surpass the 20,000 mark as the Office of the Register of Political Parties processes applications from another 15 political parties. One of the ways that you can find that an aspirant has been captured in two political parties. If such a scenario happens, then we shall ask the aspirant which party he wishes to contest on so that you put him in the right party. So that is the verification process. So the question of uh, other people being recruited, we are relying on the list that was submitted to us by, by, on, on Saturday by the, by the respective political party. But claims of underhand dealings have emerged, despite the deadline for registration of party members to participate in next month's nominations lapsing last Saturday. How comes that Jubilee is still looking for aspirants? They are all overlooking aspirants from Munda, from TSP, from Chama Chakasi and other parties. Where do you want to take those candidates? And already registration is over. 26 was the deadline. Where do you want to take those candidates? Are you telling you that you have a plan to open the register again? The 26 deadline is a political parties act deadline. So it's a legal timeline, which the registrar has no power to adjust. So we are clear that uh, that timeline has to be obeyed. If in the process there are certain people who are registered by parties by 26th, but due to one reason or another, they have not found themselves in IPPMS because of the upload, and the party has submitted that data by close of 26th, then the verification process will sort out that. 
the registrar however clarified that political parties can continue to register members but members registered after last Saturday will be ineligible to participate in next month's nominations. Francis Gashuri, Citizen TV. Elachi, let me start with you on this. More than 900 candidates now want to go independent. Is this a sign that they don't have faith in these political parties? I think what they don't have is not really faith, but uh, you'll find many of them, first of all, maybe they are very strong on the ground. They feel they can move without any political party. But at the same time, uh, they've looked at the political parties and maybe they feel indeed uh, they can be subjected or they will go through or you have a strong candidate in that political party that you'll find yourself losing and you'll have wasted money and so you'd rather meet him at the ballot yeah so many of them have different ways of how they look at um, uh, the, 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 the whole process then for me I think uh, and some of them just feel maybe the leader of that political party leader, we maybe don't go alike. So let me just move and be independent. Yeah. But the only challenge with this is that um, now when you go to strongholds where political parties are very strong, then in competing in those areas is also very difficult. Yeah. So let's see how it goes. It's a, it's a test. And uh, if it works, I think going forward, is it then that party it will open up? And since it is a, it it is indeed one of those principles that are given within the political parties act, the, the the constitution. I think it is good for us to test this and see how it works. As are the party are the parties simply just overcrowded then? Because some people will say that the reason why I, I want to go independent is this: most likely I'm not going to be given the party ticket. But if you're the most popular candidate on the ground, why should the party deny you a ticket? Exactly. And why would you go independent if you're the most popular? If you're the most popular, you come and compete within that party. Uh, parties are, must be crowded because that is the essence of having political parties and competition. What will happen is that, uh, let's see how now, for the first time, many we want to go through the register and just see how do we do these nominations. And maybe it will give faith. Uh, going further, forward to 2027 that people can appreciate we can go through nominations through a political party, use our register and get a winner. Yeah. The challenge has been, and this is what uh, in areas where we have strong uh, political parties, is that uh, for those who are new, and maybe that is why also many will go independent, they feel maybe I have not been able to register many of my members into the party register yeah. and so you find i have many members but they were never put into the party register and so i fear when i go to that nomination uh, each person has who they have really mobilized so to convince them also becomes very difficult because they know i was convinced by this uh, member of member and that is how i joined the party yeah. so it's not Many of it is not a free will where people just walk. I am a member of this party and so I will come in and just register myself. So you find that we we ourselves go look for members yeah. and then you pick them, then you register them. So they sort of become a legacy to the person who really uh, brought them in. Brought them in. Okay. And I think that's another fear okay. that people fear. Sankok, is this a vote of no confidence by the candidates in their own parties? First of all, Trevor, uh, thank you for hosting us and um, greetings to all those who are watching us. Uh, surely, Trevor, let us try to compare how many independent candidates did we have in the last election and how many are in this election, how many aspirants are in political parties. Because I'm sure as UDA, we have almost 10 times uh, the number of aspirants more than the independent ones. So you are only concentrating on the independent ones, but you are not comparing them with those aspirants that are within the political parties. So there is no vote of no confidence to the political parties. The political parties are still with a, a large chunk of yeah. those aspirants. Again, election is an expensive process. You have to have agents, whether it is uh, party primaries, or it is a general election. Now, imagine yourself having to undergo two elections within one year. 
That means the amount that you are supposed to use, you will double use simply because you have subjected yourself to party primary. So some of the people feel they may not be economically uh, endowed to be able to withstand the two uh, election, that is the party primaries and the general election. And uh, again, uh, as uh, Honorable Alachi have said, is that uh, sometimes you feel that you are late into coming into the party. And when you are late into coming to the party, the other competitors have an edge because they have been campaigning for the party. Yeah. They have been uh, in several meetings with uh, the party delegates and the party members. So you find now that you are new in coming to the party yeah. and the party primaries is just in two weeks' time, you may be... Uh, not uh, with par with them in terms of competition. Now that it is the party members mm -hmm. who will uh, be uh, be the one electing during party primaries. So I think those factors we have to look all of them. So is it then a reward system or a popularity contest? Uh, of course, it is not a reward system. As far as we are, uh, for us in UDA, we believe it is uh, will have a nomination that will be very democratic in line with the Political Parties Act, which give us three options. That is the option of consensus. There is also option of interviews, yeah. and there is the option of now the party primaries, where then there is. Uh, election that will be done. Okay. So for us as UDA, we know that the party primaries will be free, fair, and, uh, uh, and, and, and we are 100% sure of that. But I've, I've talked in terms of the fear yeah. of uh, those members who have just joined us. Now the others who were there for one year yeah. have been registering members as Honorable Elijah have said. So you may find if this the same members, we are not using the IBC register, if it is the party list register, then uh, you may di be dis disadvantaged. Okay. Honorable Bukele, what do you think? Is this a vote of no confidence in the parties <laughs> if most people decide to either decamp or go independent? Well, firstly, good morning, Kenya, and good morning, Trevor, and thanks for hosting us. Uh, first, allow me to congratulate the 2021 KCP uh, students. The results are out. Some have done pretty good. Some not so good, but all of them are heading to the high schools anyway. Yeah. So we hope they will be able to catch up as they start another journey. So it is true that uh, what we have seen, you know, 950 people going independent or registering to be independent candidates is not a mean feat. Uh, these are potent signs of things to come. Uh, to a larger extent, you know, the drafters of our constitution had a very cogent reason why they chose to have independence, which we never had before. Yeah. Uh, and, and there are very good reasons emanating from that aspect, uh, some of which are informing why we have 950 people going to contest. You remember that we have about 1,800 seats in total in the entire republic. Uh, from the 290 members of parliament to 47 women representatives to 47 governors, and you have 1,400 uh, members of county assembly. So we have about uh, slightly over 1,800 uh, political seats, out of which half are going to contest as, uh, as independents. But just as my friend Honorable Sankok is saying, yeah. If you were to juxtapose that figure against those who are going to run for political seats, then it is a drop uh, in the ocean. Because uh, in, in, other, in other seats, for instance, you have more than 10 people contesting for one political seat uh, aligned to a political party. But still, 950, uh, you would not be wrong to say, is a harsh indictment on the conduct of political parties. Why are people running away? It is absolutely lack of faith. People do not have faith in the nomination processes of political parties, and that is why uh, people are doing so. In other electoral units, what we are going through now 
uh, which is nominations in few days to come, is as good as general election. Yeah. I mean, if you were to give San Kok, for instance, uh, I'm sorry he's not from Kalenjin land, but I think if you, he was, and you give him a ticket in Kericho, he will be as good as practicing to be in the 13th parliament. So that is why it generates a very high hyperbolic political temperatures in, in that regard. So that lack of faith uh, also stems from certain times the acrimony, the violence that accompany uh, nominations. And you have seen this many times yeah. when people literally you know, take arms to fight to you know, have a vantage position, to clinch the party tickets. So there are people who are very good on the ground, yeah. but they hate to see themselves degenerating into violence, uh, which cause bodily harm and attracts the attention of the police and the prosecution department. So people don't want to go through that. So they say we would rather yeah. be independent candidates and let us square it out with the IBC yeah. uh, in August. So uh, again, there are people who think that even though you may win in a, in a free and fair nomination, you are still at the masses of the party mandarins. So if you're not in good books with the powers that be in any political outfit, then you can still be edged out. So those are the fears that you know, inform yeah. uh, mass exodus uh, to independence. You saw what happened with Jubilee nominations in 2017. Yeah. It was so chaotic they had to stop at noon. You know, an exercise that began countrywide is stopped at noon just because it was so crazy that they were not going to stomach the resultant features. So as a result, yeah. they, they, they had to. And, and, and people are fearing, you know, it, it, it may, they may stop it at a time when you are winning. Yeah. But again, you never know what happens tomorrow. And as they correctly say, a day in politics is so long. Yeah. So all these inform uh, why people would just choose to uh, run to be independent. And again, political parties also charge uh, what may pass for an exorbitant fee uh, in order to be cleared to run. Uh, as independents, as you, and you have heard uh, Sister Nderitu, the Registrar of Political Parties, allude, they only pay 500 shillings and you are cleared. Yeah. Uh, we, uh, these political outfits pay well over 100,000 for seats um, beginning from Member of Parliament upwards, uh, 50,000 to members of County Assembly. So you are looking at how to juggle uh, under these economic circumstances. Are you going for 500 shillings to be cleared or you want to pay 125,000 or 500,000 or a million in order to run for political seats? So all those uh, also inform. And finally, we are talking about the new Political Parties Act that only allows members of a political outfit to vote yeah. for their candidates. Initially, we could allow anyone who has a, a voter's card and an, an, an ID yeah. uh, to, to vote in a, in a nomination process. But now we have made it categorically because of infiltration by political parties to interfere with the affairs of others, that only members aligned to that political party and registered, not just members. You know, you may go to Luo Nyanza, for instance, and they'll tell you, I'm not a member of ODM by dint of registration, but naturally, yeah. <laughs> I belong to ODM. Yeah. So we are cutting that, okay. that only members who are um, registered by political parties yeah. Uh, will participate in this process. Okay. But, you know, two weeks ago, as people were checking their registration statuses, you, they realized that you could have belonged to a different party, for instance, Kanu, and I've never been a member of Kanu since I was born, but you find yourself uh, in Kanu. Yeah. So all these play out, and uh, that is why people are trooping yeah. to run as independents. Okay. Elechi, where's the space for the will of the people? Because it sounds to me like the parties somehow have more power on this than the will of the people. Well, uh, there is space because uh, when I listened to the registrar yesterday, she said nearly 24 million Kenyans are in political parties. Yes. So you even exceed maybe your register of 
the one of IBC. I think we are, what, 22? I don't know so far if we have reached 24. But you'll find that we are neck to neck with the same register. So it means uh, the, the will of the people is there. Uh, the, the only thing is that um, where now I would really wish political parties should now through the resources that they, they receive from the public. It is yeah. important also to really go to the counties, create awareness, let people understand your activities of the year, give them, a, I mean, a program that within this year we shall be able to do a few of these activities for our party. We'll have women leagues coming in, yeah. we'll have, uh, and it's not a club, so open it up. If your area is uh, more ODM, then all, even those who are not registered, since they believe in ODM, yeah. they should come for your meeting. So th those are some of the things. And th that is how you create more awareness for people to, to start participating into political processes, into the political party, and even coming in and volunteering to continue building that party yeah. so that it doesn't just become a party when we are coming to elections then after elections the party just disappears then it will come back after five years and the other thing maybe the registrar should do you see we, we, we say that we have like 82 now political parties and it is important for anyone who is now holding a, a political party and saying this is my political party if indeed we are saying for you to register a political party, you must have across the country members. Then you, we must see uh, the seriousness of these political parties having members, uh, having those offices, but at the same time, I know it's expensive to put offices, but then have activities across the country where people can engage and understand your political party vis-a-vis -vis the political party maybe of that region. Yeah. And, and that way, you also kill this notion that, oh, when I see a party like ODM in Central, oh, it's like a chakas. If I see a, a party like UDA in, 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 in Nyanza, oh, it's like, we need to remove that. Yeah. So that people can just feel free. Based on the ideologies of that political party, we can, you can work with that political party. Okay. I will tell you, I, am, I have faced it also in Dagoriti. Now people feel, oh, that was Jubilee. Oh, this was, and, and it is something now, the only thing that has now brought in that unity is when we are within uh, that is me of Moja. Now people can understand. Oh, so people can work together. Yeah. Oh, so there's no enmity in these political parties. So I think it's time. And also political parties after election, I think you can engage and have within a county. You can also have once in a while all political parties joining together because in the end of the day, you'll find a member of, uh, you're, you're a member of parliament, one is in this party, the other one is in this party, but they are working together and, and, and they are building together the nation. At the same time, they go together and fight for their county. Okay. At that time, they don't remember they were coming from these different parties. Yeah. So it is time after elections, let's have that harmony, that okay. you can work together for the sake of your county. All right. Yeah. Sankok, the will of the people, yeah. even in the party where you are, isn't that what is supposed to be center stage? And where is the space for it? Because it seems to me like the party bigwigs have more say than the people. No, in UDA, the will of the people is really uh, there. First of all, we decided that uh, persons with disability, because of the nature in which they were brought up in the vicious circle of poverty among persons with disability, is that their nomination fee was waived. For women, it was halved. For youth, it was halved. So that at least we have as many uh, as possible of them uh, being within the party and be able to uh, compete uh, for that party ticket uh, in a favorable uh, environment. Yeah. So even let me thank the UD, ha having been the first ever political party in Kenya to waive uh, nomination fee for persons with disability. As a representative of persons with disability, I really do appreciate. In other parties, they, they even buy the party ticket. Uh, again, you know where the problem is. Elijah disagrees, but we'll get to that. No, you, you right. will have to agree yeah. because it is the truth. You know, you cannot disagree with the facts. Yeah. So uh, again, <laughs> in um, in the past, you know, there have been some chaotic kind of uh, nomination process. Uh, you remember the issue of uh, ODM yeah. during nomination. You know, you will always witness uh, violence 
And you know, Jubilee was really halted, but there was no cases of violence meted upon aspirants and meted upon opposing camps. But when you go to uh, the like ODM, it scares away because you know people have gone to hospital courtesy of violence during nomination. Uh, people have gone to jail courtesy of violence during party no no nomination. Yeah, you can even see now a whole party chairman of ODM is no longer contesting. You can imagine now the intrigue that were. Uh, that, that went under the table eh, to be able to scare away a whole party chairman. You know, if the party chairman himself is not confident of that particular political party, how do you expect uh, the common Mwanainji to be really confident on that uh, party? And again, uh, the other issue that uh, scare away Aspirin, and I am sure uh, Jared will agree with me. You know, Jared have a track record of uh, being uh, the best in distribution of bursaries. I've witnessed myself uh, sending children with disabilities to be given bursaries uh, in Nyando, and uh, they have really told me that uh, majority of them have received bursaries from Jared uh, Okello, and I thank him for that. But there are ethnic political parties. Like now, if you see ODM, who is the uh, party leader of ODM, who is the minority leader in the Senate, uh, courtesy of ODM, who is the minority leader in National Assembly, courtesy of ODM, who is the, uh, the chair of uh, Finance Committee, courtesy of ODM, uh, who is behind Raila Odinga when he addresses the media. In fact, these characters, uh, they live within a walking distance from each other. So you can associate with a certain uh, region, in fact, a certain ethnic uh, 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 tribe. You know. But when you talk about the, the first time that we came, to close of being having a national political party was when we had now the, the Jubilee, you know, in 2017. Because Jubilee in 2017 was a political party that the party leader came from Central, the deputy party leader came uh, 500 kilometers from Central, that is uh, from Sugoi. The majority leader in parliament came from all the way from Garissa, the border of Kenya and Somalia. You can see the faces behind uh, Jubilee were from the four corners yeah. of the Republic of Kenya. Now, in this uh, election of 2022, the only party that have that national outlook is UDA. See who is behind UDA. The party leader uh, is actually from uh, uh, Sugoi, and then the chairman of the party come from uh, 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 Kambani. And then you, you see the like of Aden Dwale being there, the likes of uh, Jichopefu Muhammad Ali being there, Rigadi Gashagwa, Sankok from the border of Kenya and, uh, and Tanzania, yeah. and you have Nanok from the border of Kenya and Southern Sudan. You know, at least there is, uh, there is uh, the outlook of the nation yeah. in UDA. But in others like Waipa, if you talk of members of parliament from Waipa, of course you will find Kina Kimilu, you will find Kina Jeskambalu, you will find people that live within 25 kilometers from uh, their party leaders. So, okay. uh, this one scare because if you are then from uh, Narok and you belong to Waipa, you will rather be in, uh, in, 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 in independent. Yeah. If you are from Kambani, then you will fight for the party ticket because you know that is a direct uh, ticket to be a member of parliament. Okay. Trevor, yeah. Trevor yeah. you know, know listening to Sankok speak, yeah. Huh? Yeah. you would imagine that UDA has always been in existence. <laughs> that is what he's, I mean, UDA is a new political outfit that was registered the other day. Yeah, very young. When uh, the deputy president chose not to work with his boss. And now this is going to be a litmus test for them. At least ODM has a history. Yeah. The only party that has conducted primaries ever since the year 2007 to date Imperfections abound, but at least ODM carries out nominations all through. This is the only party that has very clean audit uh, records with the Auditor General, because again, being funded by the Registrar of Political Parties through the, regist uh, the, the Political Parties Fund, go through the records. I mean, ODM is the only party that has endeavored to do what is right. Um, Uda has only one member of parliament, and when my brother Sankok speaks, you'd think half 
parliament belongs to UDA. So this is going to be their very first one. And I will be meeting them on the streets from next week with teary eyes, because I know those who bungled Jubilee in 2017, and they have trooped to Uda, and they are going to Trevor. mess it up. Yeah, let, let, him a prophet. let him finish. I'll give you a your, your time will come. Yeah. <laughs> now, what we are trying to do in ODM, in order to forestall uh, all this acrimony, uh, and you heard my chairperson of National Elections Board, uh, Wakili Muma, uh, she said, we are employing several uh, methods at arriving at a candidate. And, and you know, remember that this is a political party presenting its candidates to IBC for elections. Parties cannot do elections, and that is the truth. Uh, and that is why parties talk about merger of polling stations, because we are not as funded as IBC to carry out a national outlook uh, of an election. We can't. And that is why, firstly, we are employing consensus method. In areas where we have credible polling results, that so-and-so is winning against all the other contenders, they are put on a table to sit down and agree because again, people all understand their strengths on the ground. Yeah. So, in, 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 and this has worked in other areas for us. Uh, and it is just a method, you know, upon which we, we hope that this uh, high octane politics will be toned down. Yeah. Uh, there are areas where we have only single candidate. I mean, why wait? Just give them direct ticket. Uh, if consensus would fail, uh, then our last resort is to go universal suffrage. Yeah. And um, that universal suffrage would invite people belonging to this political party, ODM, to cast their votes in favor of the candidates that they want. And once the results are tallied and uh, X wins against Y, a certificate will be given at that level. But okay. that is our last resort as a party. Okay. Uh, because again, we don't want to see uh, this degree of acrimony that we have witnessed before. But again, Trevor, on political parties, uh, the register, I think, said we have about 65 political parties so far, 65 registered political parties. Uh, how I wish that the registrar would, after all this, carry out a comprehensive audit of all these parties, because the law is very clear on what qualifies to be a political party. Yeah. One, you must have branches in at least 24 counties, branches. Yeah. You should have membership of at least a thousand in every county. Mm -hmm. Now, these briefcase uh, uh, political parties, mm. I don't understand how 65 parties, uh, be, I, I, I travel in this country, and I travel a lot, yeah. from Northeastern to Isbania, from Malaba to Lungalunga. Uh, and if these 65 political parties have offices, I could, I could have seen, yeah. I could have seen. So I think the next step is how do we carry out uh, an audit yeah. so that we know which parties really qualify to be called political parties. Okay. And that is why in the wisdom yeah. of members of parliament, they said it is not blanket that any political party will benefit from the political party's fund. You must have at least 5% of representation in parliament in order to qualify. Okay. And most political parties fall short All right. of that experience. I will take a quick break. I will come back and I'll give you a chance to respond. More than 82 political parties have actually submitted their registers to, for certification. 82 of them, 65 wow. have been cleared, but 82 are the ones that have submitted their re registers for certification. But we'll come back to that in just a bit. I see some of your feedback coming through at Trevor Mbija at Citizen TV Kenya. Use the hashtag daybreak. Let's take that quick break and come back. Still talking about this nominations headache because it's starting on the 1st of April all the way to the end. All right? See you in a bit.